Well, hello, my name is John Meyer, and this week my friend David Hillowitz is going to teach me and you how to remove unwanted frequencies from an audio sample using Isotope RX. That's basically the workflow for fixing this kind of sample in RX. If you're new to my channel, I talk about writing and recording music, as well as all the other stuff that goes into making a career in music. In the coming weeks, I plan on releasing my first commercial sample. It's a premium version of my Kawhi Felt Piano, and I'm calling it the Meyer Felt. However, there is a small problem, and I think it's best that I explain that by letting you eavesdrop in on my conversation with Dave. Dave. Hey, are you, am I sideways? You are sideways. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm just working on some tape loops. All right. You got something coming up for us? Yeah. Got a, got a video coming up. I, I'm, gonna, I'm just about to unscrew this and see if I can turn it into a tape loop. Uh, yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> what what do you got going on? Well, I have a problem. Okay. One of the very first sounds I released was my Kawhi piano back there. Yeah. And that was, I mean, I did the flute violin sample, the Arctic Swells Labs thing for Spitfire uh, that became Arctic Swells Labs thing. But that was really the first sound that I made that people really kind of downloaded a lot. And yeah, uh, I downloaded it. You did. Awesome. Yeah. I went back and revisited the sounds and uh, I'm, I'm going to make a kind of a premium version of the sound. Right. And so this is going to be my my first step into following your lead and selling samples. And and so I'm super excited, nervous, all those things about it. And I want it to be right. But when I was playing it the other day, I noticed that there is this note and it has this overtone to it. And at first okay. I didn't notice it. I'll admit uh, just because it's kind of what I'm used to hearing anyways. And I sent it to a few friends and they were like, hey, man, there's this overtone. And so sometimes it's cool. Sometimes it's not. But I was wondering, would you mind taking a look at it and see or listen and see if there's anything that uh, can be done? I mean, I, I have some experience with like Isotope. I have RX. I don't really know how to use it as well as I should. And perhaps it's an EQ adjustment or perhaps it's nothing at all. But I would love to have your professional opinion on whether or not you think it's uh, something that should be dealt with and can be dealt with. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, this is very much in my wheelhouse. Anytime I can use RX and I'm, I'm happy. All it's, right. uh, yeah, it's, it's really powerful. You can do a lot of stuff. Really what I need is an outside perspective. Cause it's just like okay. music, these samples, you get used to them sounding a certain way. So. Oh, believe me. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I've, well, cool. I, I've been through that too. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, how about I send it to you and then when you have some time, look at it and we can discuss it later. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds sounds great. And you're saying it's just it's just one sample? I think it's just one sample that has the issue. Uh, okay. But if you wouldn't mind playing it, yeah. Don't don't tell me which sample. I and that way, like, I'll play through and I'll I'll see if I hear it. Got it. I'll, okay. Yeah, that's probably the best way to go. I, okay. I think, perfect. I think you will hear it if if you are like everyone else that I've sent it to. You will hear it. So. Yeah, plus I get my hands on a pre-release John Meyer sample set. So uh, <laughs> send it over. I will. All right. Thanks, man. Sure. Not only did David take a listen to my sample, he made a David Hillowitz tutorial video to go inside my John Meyer video. Hey, John. Uh, so I'm actually going to shoot this as one of my video tutorials because I'm Dave and I have basically one setting. And uh, if you want to share it, uh, yeah, you can. Okay, so before we get started, my first order of business is to put on headphones. Uh, my favorite headphones for detail work are these uh, Sennheiser HD 280s. Um, yeah, they're pretty beat up as you can see, but they seem to get the job done. Before anything else, the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out which WAV files we're even working with. Uh, I'm going to launch Contact and just play every single key until I hear something that sounds a little bit weird. That's it. I can definitely tell. Can you hear that, how it's not quite a clean note? Uh, if you can't, uh, you may want to switch headphones, otherwise this is going to be a very long video for you. 
Um, yeah, next order of business is to drill into contact and basically try to figure out which actual wave file that note corresponds to. I'm gonna hit the note again. We're gonna see which uh, one of these gets a red dot. Oh, it's this one. Okay, felt piano MD4RR1. Okay, now we can quit out of contact because we have all the information we need. Next, I'm going to go into this directory. I'm gonna search for D4. Just gonna pick one of these at random to work with. Okay, I feel like I can hear it pretty clearly in there. So that sound, that slightly weird overtone is caused by extra unwanted frequencies in our signal. In order to fix them, we have to figure out what those frequencies are. Uh, we have a couple options for figuring those out. One is to use just like a regular parametric EQ in whatever DAW you use, uh, and you can just listen with your ears and you will eventually be able to figure that out. A much easier way is to use a, a software that has like a spectrogram, something like Isotope RX. Uh, for the sake of this video, that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna load up RX and we're gonna just take a look at our signal. Okay, here's RX. Uh, I should mention that for this specific kind of work, you can use pretty much any version of RX. Even RX elements will get the job done. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to set it to spectrogram mode by moving this slider down here. I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger. Okay, and here is a picture of all of the frequencies in our wave file. Another thing that's useful when you're getting started is to switch to the frequency selection tool by clicking here. Uh, and now instead of selecting a time range, you can actually select frequencies like this. Another super useful tool for this kind of work is a MIDI chart that will show you what frequencies correspond to what notes. Uh, I've actually got one loaded up in Safari. It's just this spreadsheet that I made like a million years ago and I use it for everything. Okay, we've got that open. We have pretty much everything we need at this point. Okay, so we've got our wave file. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. Um, first, we've got this, this uh, area here, and I'm actually gonna switch back to time selection just for a second. This right here is where the hammer hits the strings. Uh, and as you can see, for a brief while, pretty much every single frequency is lit up. That's typical for percussive sound. Percussive sounds often don't have one overriding uh, frequency because they don't necessarily have pitch. After that, we've got these bands. I'm gonna switch back to frequency selection, like this and this and this. And those are the bands that actually determine what note we hear when this wave file gets played. For reference, I'm actually gonna pull up another sample so we can see what like a more classic uh, frequency profile would look like. Okay, there we've got it. So this is a super typical frequency profile. We've got the start where the hammer hits right here. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of frequency bands and they're pretty evenly spaced. So the lowest one is called the fundamental and then you have all of the harmonics. Uh, the first harmonic, the second harmonic, third harmonic, etc. The spacing is called the harmonic series. Uh, there's actually a good Wikipedia page for it. And basically the first harmonic is going to have half the wavelength or double the frequency. Second harmonic is gonna have three times the frequency, four times the frequency, five times the frequency, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, our lowest uh, note here is uh, just under 600 Hertz, something like that. The next one we expect to be about 1200. Yeah, it's like 1192. And then after that, we expect it to be three times that 600. So about 1800, a little bit less than 1800, which it is. The fourth one will be four times 600, which would be 2400, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the pattern we're looking for uh, in most instruments, most melodic instruments. Um, so going back to our sample that we're actually working with, we can see we've got kind of a strange situation. We've got our fundamental here, but then we've got this weird thing here, and it's way too close to the fundamental to be something we want to keep around. So that's our first inkling that maybe this is a frequency that should be gotten rid of. Down here, we can see uh, data about the selection that I've made. Um, the low is 653 hertz, the high is 670 hertz. If we go back to our, um, our handy MIDI note chart, uh, we can see that 670, the note is about an E. It's like a whole step up from the D that we're actually trying to have this note be. So it's definitely not something we want. As far as getting rid of this sound, we have a bunch of different options. We can literally actually hit the delete key and I'll show you what happens you can see it actually got rid of that frequency. 
Or we can just try to lower the gain a little bit like if we were doing an EQ. Um, and instead of actually taking it all out, uh, it will just take out some of that frequency. It's important to remember that any change that I make in RX is gonna be destructive, meaning uh, there's no way to undo it unless I have a backup of the file. Another option is to do all of your analysis in RX and actually do the changes using like a parametric EQ in a DAW. As far as workflows go, that has some benefits because you can actually go back and make changes if you have it as a session in your DAW, whereas this is, you know, completely destructive. For the purposes of this video, I don't mind that at all. I'm just gonna continue up the spectrum into the higher uh, harmonics and get rid of anything that doesn't look like it should be there. So up here, we've got 1200 Hertz, which we know at this point is D5, I would guess. Um, we can actually go to our chart and see what D5 is. Yeah, it's 1174. So we want this frequency around. This is our second harmonic, assuming that we count the fundamental as our first. But up here, we've got a bunch of random frequencies that obviously are not. They're way too close to that note. So we're going to do the same treatment. We can actually select multiple frequencies at the same time just by holding down shift. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Render on the gain, and it's going to bring those down a ton. This one needs a little more. Moving on. So the next expected frequency that we would actually want if we were following the harmonic series would be 3 times 587. 1761. So we expect to see something around 1761. And yeah, we do. That's it right there. But then up here, what is this? Some whole new frequency that has nothing to do with anything. It's around 1980, I want to say. Okay, that's a B. I don't know what it's doing there, but we don't want it. I should say that I'm going very slowly for the sake of this video, but usually this kind of work takes like three minutes per sample, it's not too bad. And if you have the standard version of um, Isotope RX, you can actually edit multiple files at the same time. You can load them all up and you can do what's called composite view. So if you've got like a bunch of D4 samples that all have the same harmonics, very easy to make these changes across the board on all of the files. Okay, I'm gonna speed through the next few of these so you don't have to watch me doing this in real time. And then we'll listen to a before and after. Okay, so I think we're ready to listen to this. Uh, I've just done this pretty quickly, but uh, here is the original signal. And here is the new fixed version. So quite a bit better. So yeah, that's basically the workflow for fixing this kind of sample in RX. Um, hope this was helpful. Yeah, very much so, David. For those of you who do not know who Dave is, I'm sure you all do at this point, he is a brilliant mind and a huge uh, help to everybody in this community of sampling. His decent sampler that he created is fantastic and now so many of the sounds for Piano Book are compatible with the decent sampler. So it's a no brainer, go get it. I loaded it in today on my machine. It's fantastic. I highly recommend you do it. It's really changing the game for samples. It allows so many of us to make these sounds and share these sounds. It's really neat to see what's happening in the world of sampling. Dave is a huge part of that. And this sound that I've been making, I'm super excited. I'm a couple weeks away from release. Look for some more information about it. But this is my piano that I have behind me. I love it. It's the first piano that I sampled years and years ago, and it kind of got me going in this whole world. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, this is one way you could kind of support what I'm doing is by buying something that hopefully you can use in your own productions. So look for more information from me in the coming weeks, and I'll talk to you soon.